Happy New Year, church family. As we embark upon a new year, it's time to walk into a new season. Let us recharge and refresh as we strengthen our bodies and minds during our annual Daniel Fest. But before we do, we want to thank God for all of the amazing things he has done for us in 2023. And he is not done with us yet because we're expecting more in 2024. I'm Philandria Wilson. I'm Andre Kahn Jr. I'm Jasmine Yates. And I'm Brian Keith Roberson II. And this is your Avenue News. News. Church family, we are thrilled to invite you to join us for a celebration of the life and achievements of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mark your calendars for Monday, January 15th at 11 a.m. We can't wait to see you there. Are you ready for the YA Challenge? We are starting the new year with prayer, fasting, and worship, so get ready. Thursday, January 18th at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary will be your date and destiny. The YA 600 Challenge will set you up for a dynamic year. The Congregational Care and Development Ministry invites you to visit the church website to take the Spiritual Gifts Survey. Then join us for Gifts and Graces, a Spiritual Gifts Symposium on Saturday, January 20th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come and learn about the diversity of gifts and discover where your gifts may be used at Wheeler Avenue. Get more details and register today on the events page. Join us after both services in the Community Life Center Gymnasium, Sunday, January 21st, for the I Serve Ministry Fair. Swing by and learn about more than 70 ministries of the church and see how you might be able to get connected and serve for the glory of God. For those who are interested in strengthening your walk with Christ through Christian education and discipleship training courses, there are many options for you right here at Wheeler Avenue. Visit our website today and learn about the courses and workshops that are being offered free of charge, such as Disciples Prayer Life, Experiencing God, Master Life, The Joy That I Have, and Spiritual Disciplines. After the funeral, when the cards, calls, and flowers have stopped coming, most of the people around you return to their normal lives while your grief continues. Let us walk with you in your journey through grief. Grief Share is an 11-week support group sponsored by Congregational Care, where you will find compassionate support. The next virtual session of Grief Share will start Monday, January 22nd at 7 p.m. Visit the events page to register. Make the decision to begin healing today. Join us for a grief share. Join the marriage ministry for their Before We Say I Do premarital sessions every second and fourth Saturday in January through September. Register for a winter, spring, or fall session that best fits your schedule. Greetings, Willow family. We're the Wilkins, and we're so excited to share with you about how God has enriched our marriage during our five-year journey with the Wheeler Avenue Marriage Ministry. From our early days as newlyweds to navigating parenthood with our energetic two-year-old twins, this ministry has been a constant source of blessings. The monthly sessions and insight from the first Tuesday on the Avenue, along with quarterly marriage events, have truly blessed our marriage and our family. No matter your stage in married life, we believe you'll find the same blessings. And we especially as parents highly recommend taking time to focus on your marriage and joining the first Tuesday on the Avenue Marriage Enrichment Experience. So stay tuned to the monthly news announcements. On the first Tuesday of the month, simply go online, open the first Tuesday's event, and click on the Zoom link to join us. God bless, and may we all know his peace as we invest in our marriages. Join us for Untangling Relationships, a 12-unit support group that focuses on a Christian perspective of codependency. The first session begins on January 22nd, 2024 at 7 p.m. on the virtual platform. We would love to see you there. Register on the Wheeler Avenue website. Are you a business owner with a great product or service that you like to share with the church family? Did you know that there is a Wheeler Avenue business directory that is managed by the Financial Empowerment Ministry? The online platform allows active members of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church the opportunity to advertise their business at no cost. Don't wait, expand, connect, promote. Submit your business information today by visiting our website or scanning the QR code, or you can email business directory at wheelerbc.org to begin the process. There is so much taking place and we hope you stay connected. For more information, follow us on Flock Notes, Facebook, 
Instagram, Twitter, or check out our church app. I'm Andre Kahn Jr. I'm Philandria Wilson. I'm Jasmine Yates. And I'm Brian Keith Roberson II. And this has been your Avenue News. News. And remember, we are Wheeler wherever.
seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We invite you to refer to the list on the screen for our bereaved families and for members requesting our prayers for health concerns. We do have funeral services this week. Services for Sister Tammy Butler will be Thursday, January the 11th here at the church at Wheeler Avenue. Visitation is at 10 o'clock a.m. Services at 11 o'clock a.m. Services for Sister Veda Burns. It's Friday, January the 12th at noon, and that's at Impact Church in East Point, Georgia, as well as services for Sister Carolyn Hall, Saturday, January the 13th, here at Willer Avenue Baptist Church. Visitation at 10 a.m. Services at 11 o'clock a.m. Please visit the Congregational Care page on the church website for a complete listing of care concerns. You may now take your preferred posture as we go before the throne of grace. Amen. If every heart would bow, as we talk to our Lord and Savior, eternal and all-wise God, we thank you for being our guide and our guard. We thank you for giving, this, giving us the supernatural strength to cross over into 20 and 24. We thank you, God, for being an all-powerful God. We thank you for being an all-knowing God. We thank you for being such a wise God that you knew what was best for us. We thank you for the no's that you told us in 2023 because it just saved somebody's life to be able to cross over in 2024. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the yeses that were answered in 2023 that encouraged our heart, encouraged our faith to be able to look for new mercies and new promises in 2024. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would have right away in this worship service. We know that there's a fresh word for your children for this new year. Someone came here today and they thought that it looks like what 2023 looked like. And it feels like what 2023 felt like. And it smells like what 2023 smelled like. But God, you are doing a new thing in the name of Jesus. And so we come against anything that would prevent us from being able to have the trust and the faith in you to believe that you'll do something new something different in our lives in the name of Jesus we ask that whatever it is you desire to do in the heavenlies allow it to be done on earth as it's already been established in the heavens and we ask God that you would give us the kind of faith that would rise up to you that even as we have a natural experience that you would give us supernatural insight Don't allow this Daniel fast to be in vain God but elevate our spiritual understanding elevate our apprehension and comprehension so that we can see in the spirit what you desire to do to us and through us and for us in the new year we say yes to your will and yes to your way from the bottom of our hearts the depths of your soul do something miraculous God heal set free and deliver and save in the name of Jesus Come Consecrate this worship service that we can elevate ourselves into a celestial, heavenly realm, God. That supernatural miracles will come forth in the name of Jesus. Anoint the singers on today that they will sing as a choir of angels and they would sing until the atmosphere will change. Anoint your musicians, anoint the psalmist, anoint this congregation, anoint the man of God, the angel over this house that just 
as you breathe through him in the 8 o'clock service. We thank you there's a fresh anointing for the 1130 service. We thank you that you revive his soul again. Give him supernatural insight, supernatural revelation and illumination. Make preaching easy. Part the way for him to go forth with holy boldness and authority in the name of Jesus. We shall be different than how we came in. And we say, thank you, Jesus. It is so. It shall be done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's children who stand in agreement say amen, amen, and amen. the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister Carly Dash Andrews, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. church even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister LaShawn, Kamari, Latifa Andrews in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister faith Mariah Ards in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen she came in she said I just want you to know my son's getting baptized today too we thank God for mother and son on this Lord's day and in obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ 
based upon the profession of your faith in him. Now I baptize you, our sister Courtney Rochelle Brown, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ based upon the profession of your faith in him I baptize you our sister Emery Monroe Davis in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen Based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister, Tierra Sine Davis, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. church even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister Madison Paige Jones in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister Mariah Elaine Geit in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen Hold your breath.
obedience to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Samad, Amir, Acklin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our brother Santiago Jaden Dominguez in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen oh, happy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our brother Michael Micah Lee Ilan Kizzy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen Oh happy day Baptistry area this morning introducing myself to these young men I was told that this gentleman just passed his FAA certificate licensing at age 18 age 18 soon to be a pilot and we're grateful yeah Yeah, we celebrate. <laughs> Texas Southern University. And his professor is in the water with us, Deacon Terrence Fontaine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Landon, Stephen, Renew, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Today's reading will come from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 34. And we'll be reading from the uh, New Standard uh, Version, and it's as follows. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and the blood of the Lord. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. But if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give instruction when I am. Let's pause for a moment of silence. But if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. God, as a, a blessing to the hearers and readers of his word. Please remain standing for our hymn, Nothing But the Blood.
life, the blood that cleanses and washes and renews and restores and revitalizes and redeems. Thank God for the blood of Jesus on this first Sunday of the year of our Lord 2024. We've come to thank God for the blood. Thank God that the blood allowed us to cross over one more time. Hallelujah for the blood. This is the day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Anybody glad to be in church one more Sunday, one more first Sunday? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. What a joy it is to greet you, my brothers, my sisters, in that name that is above all names, even the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. I am delighted. I'm excited. I'm privileged to honor special guests who are present with us, and I want to thank God for them. Listen, normally I slip this in as I'm thanking God for special guests, but will you on this first Sunday of 2024 thank God for our founding pastor emeritus, the Reverend Pastor William Alexander Lawson. Help me thank God for our founder, the Pope's Pope, our sage, our the one who kicked it all off. We stand upon his shoulders and we honor him every time we get a chance. Thank God for the Lawson family. We honor you, sir, on this first Sunday. Listen, it's on behalf of our founder and our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus Cosby, that I want to welcome special guests, first-time visitors. If this is your very first time and you're worshiping with us either in the cathedral or in the sanctuary, we are, we're going to ask that you would stand. We really want to honor you on this Sunday. Amen. I see you standing. Church family, help me thank God as they stand for all of our first-time visitors. Amen, amen, amen. To God be the glory. Listen, to each of you who stands or who stood as first-time guests on behalf of these distinguished gentlemen and the entirety of the church family known as Wheeler Avenue, allow for me to express to each of you just how excited we are that you opted to worship with us on this first Sunday. We pray that you are being blessed by this experience of worship, and we pray that you will continue to be blessed throughout this experience. We want for you to make yourselves at home. If you have a church home, we pray that you would take back the warmest greetings and regards. Let your church family, let your pastor know about our excitement and joy and delight to worship with you on this Sunday. However, if you do not have a church home, we pray that you would truly be blessed by the entirety of this experience. We want for you to find in this place somewhere where you can call home, and we'd love to call you our sister, our brother, in this family of faith, this fellowship, a body of, a body of believers. To each of you, we just say thank you. We're excited about your presence here, and we can prove it to you right now. Church family, help me thank God one more time for all of our first-time visitors. Amen. There are instructions on the screen to each of the first-time guests. Would you follow those instructions? That will afford Pastor Cosby an opportunity to write you a letter later on this week, virtually expressing his delight with your presence among us. If you would do that, we would be the better. We likewise want to thank God for each of you who tunes in and worships with us virtually. We are Wheeler wherever. So wherever you are around this Our God's Globe, it is our joy to welcome you even virtually into this experience of worship. We pray likewise that you have been and will be blessed as you worship with us. If it's your very first time and you're on YouTube or Facebook, there are chats that are enabled and we'd love to hear from you. And there are brothers and sisters in those chats who would love to greet you with the warm love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Lord's Day. But we thank God for you, one and all. Listen, I want to honor the presence of Brother Christian Menifee. He is currently our Harris County attorney and we thank God for him. He is here with us and he is running for re-election and we thank God for his bid for re-election. We're praying with you, sir. I likewise want to thank God for uh, this is a Virgil Ratliff here. Virgil Ratliff? If you hey, hey, God be praised for you. She is running for Harris County Sheriff, and we want to thank God for her presence among us on this Sunday. God be with you as you in, engage in this campaign. We likewise want to thank God for one of our members and ministry leaders. She gives leadership to our legal ministry. She is the person of Siobhan Carr. Siobhan, would you stand? Siobhan is running for president.
probate judge, position five, court five, and we thank God for her, and we are praying with you and for you. We honor you, and we thank God for your presence among us. Not too far from her is our very own newly inaugurated, re-inaugurated councilwoman, and we honor your presence among us, Dr. Carolyn Evans Shabazz. Amen. God be praised for you. Listen, we don't just thank God for all of these special guests. We thank God for the entirety of the uh, family of faith gathered on the campus. We are family, brothers and sisters, one to another. So make sure you look at that brother, look at that sister, put a smile on your face. Let your neighbor know that you're glad to be in worship with them. Say, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. You know why? Because he didn't have to let you live. But I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. Thank God for all of you. Somebody say, I'm glad to see you one more time. If this 
If this your first time, say, I'm glad to see you for the first time. Glad, glad, glad. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> I'm glad to see you, Pastor. Glad to see you, family. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Well, since we're shouting for the past month or so, our minister of music has been sitting with his family in the pews. But on this first Sunday, our minister of music is back in his rightful place. Will you thank God that he... Come on and celebrate! for just about 30 more seconds. for this wonderful privilege to gather together in the Lord's house to celebrate God's goodness all among us, all about us, all around us. God's been good. Thank God for those of you who are in the cathedral of the Lord this afternoon. And help me thank God for those seated in the sanctuary this afternoon. We praise God for, for them and for their forbearance. Look at that, the sanctuary is full of saints today. Come on and thank God for our sisters and brothers worshiping in the sanctuary. Amen. God bless you one and all. Happy New Year, church family. Happy New Year. So glad to see you in this year 2024. Many of you were in worship with us Sunday night. We praise God for you. Others of you have not seen all year, but it's good to see you. And we thank God for your presence among us and we celebrate God's goodness in our lives. We certainly celebrate the distinguished gentleman who is our founding pastor emeritus, the Reverend Dr. William Alexander Lawson. Help me one more time to thank God for him. Amen. God bless you, pastor. We're glad you're here. Amen. We celebrate you. Uh, many of our elected officials and those candidating for elected position were recognized by our executive pastor, but uh, one came in just as he was concluding his remarks, and we do not want to forget to mention her. We are grateful for her fearless leadership in the 18th Congressional District in the United States Congress, and we are grateful that she is running and seeking re-election to that seat in the 18th Congressional District. Our Congresswoman is here. The Honorable Sheila Jackson Lee, will you help me thank God for her? Come on and thank God for our Congresswoman. She let me know that one no does not mean that she is finished with her work and that she plans to continue to work tirelessly uh, for the people of this 18th Congressional District and she has come to seek our support in that regard and so we ask that you will pray for her as she continues to do the work. Super Tuesday is coming, it's March 5th and you need to know that so she's got a lot of work to do in a short period of time and we're praying for you Madis Madam Congresswoman that God will continue to give you strength as you continue to fight fearlessly for those of us in this 18th Congressional District and all those in this country and around the world. We appreciate you and we thank you so much for coming and sharing with us on this Sunday, this first Sunday of 2024. Well, I've got a few questions for you, church family. How's the fast going? <laughs> going all right? Yes. 
That's a quarter of every road that has responded. Other folk look down in their phones. It's like, no, let me not answer that one. I'm not going to tell an untruth in the Lord's church. So, you know, you just, it's just acting as if I didn't say a word just then. I appreciate that. That's cool. Listen, those of us who are fasting have gone these last six days, and we thank God for each of you who has, 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 has joined with us on this fast for this year. Every January or during the season of Lent, we fast. We make sure that we are preparing our bodies, spiritually equipping ourselves for the journey that is ahead of us and I'm grateful for those of you who have chosen to fast with us those of you uh, who have not chosen to fast but you would like to participate listen it's not too late join us today join us tomorrow prepare yourselves for the fast and let's go all the way through the end of January check check being very mindful of what we put into our bodies and very cognizant of the reality that we want to give God strong bodies for 2024 and if you go along with us this journey you will be sure to have, have a difference made in your body before January 31st comes to uh, fruition. I want to thank God for those of you who started, but you dropped off somewhere along the way in the last six days. Don't worry about that. There's no condemnation. Pick right back up tomorrow and let's start all over again and let's make the journey all the way through the month of January. Amen. All right, next question. How's that Bible reading going? How's that Bible reading going? Oh, a few more of you are reading the Bible. Yes. There are a few more of you who are reading the Bible, and I praise God for that, or you just want to clap because everybody on your row was clapping. Either way, it's all right. But we're reading the Bible from cover to cover this year, and want all of you to join with us. If you did not start on the first day of January, you've got some catching up to do, but you can start today or tomorrow, and let's read together. The passages are not very lengthy, so you can read them in a very short period of time, and you can join with us all the way through till December 31st first if you've never read the bible from cover to cover this is your year if you've done it before come on let's do it again and let's make sure that we read together as a church family it will encourage us it will strengthen us and it will help us to be better believers better christians as the days go on all right well we want you to be in prayer and bible study on wednesday we'll start at 6 a.m we had a fabulous prayer vigil this past wednesday and we were in prayer from 7 a.m to 7 p.m We'll be starting at 6 o'clock as we do every Wednesday with prayer. And this Wednesday we'll do the same. And so we invite you to meet us in the virtual space at 6 a.m. for the first 12 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of that hour. And then after that, uh, we will be in the sanctuary at 12 noon uh, as the Reverend Robert shall lead us in our New Year's Bible study. And then at 6 p.m., the Dr. Atikwefio will lead us in prayer. And the prayer ministry will join her in leadership thereof. And so we invite you to join us for that hour-long prayer time. And then at 7 p.m. will be the second session of Bible study. That happens every Wednesday unless otherwise announced. And I'm thankful that these brothers and sisters lead us in prayer and Bible study every Wednesday of the year. Now, please know that next Monday, the day after, uh, the, uh, one, a week, week from tomorrow, next Monday will be Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And we're excited about MLK Day at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. For those who do not know, we celebrate MLK Day on campus every single year, and this year is no different. We recognize that our founding pastor and Dr. King were very good friends who worked collaboratively with one another to ensure the justice of all humanity that would be, be, be a reality in their lives, and I'm grateful that in this place we have the opportunity to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and if you're inclined, if you're available, we invite you to come and share with us as we invite sisters and brothers from across this city to be here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church as we provide a portrait of the beloved community. If you don't know what the beloved community is, Google it and find out what Dr. King said about the beloved community and then come here Monday at 11 a.m. Next Monday, 11 a.m. and let's see if we can provide a portrait of the beloved community here in this sacred space called the Cathedral. The Dr. Steve Wells, the pastor of the South Main Baptist Church, will be our guest and he's going to be our speaker, but he won't be the only guest. There's several religious leaders from various perspectives who will be here on next Monday and we look forward to having them here and I hope that you will be here as we welcome our guests onto our church campus next Monday. Listen, my brothers and sisters, it is the first Sunday of the month and any first Sunday, every first Sunday, we celebrate those who have been born in that particular month. If you're a January baby, will you please stand here in the cathedral and in the sanctuary so we can celebrate you. 
If you're a January baby, come on, January folk. Praise the Lord for you. Come on, let's celebrate our January birthday babies. Praise the Lord. They're standing in the sanctuary, they're standing here in the cathedral, and we praise God for all of you who are celebrating this month. Our last Mohican, the last of our five children, Aaliyah Marie, will be 15 this month. Lord have mercy, and we praise God for her. But many of you are celebrating, and so we want to sing to all of you. Let's sing happy birthday to all of these precious people. Praise God for you. Praise God for you. Is Lamika Mackey here? Right here. She said, right, she said it loud too. Today is her 50th birthday, and she brought all her friends to celebrate with her. Hey, sis. Happy birthday to you. We praise God for you, and we celebrate with you on this your 50th anniversary. To God be the anniversary of life. To God be the glory. Listen, I want to celebrate a few more people just before the offering. If you're a member, if you're a member either uh, actively participating today or you're not on schedule today, you remember the first aid care team. Will you please stand? First aid care team, will you please stand? If you're either on schedule, on duty today or not on duty. These men and women, you see some of them around you. You can't see them all. Yeah. Let me tell you about these folks. If you were here Sunday, last Sunday, either at either of the services, especially at the evening service, you saw us celebrate sisters and brothers who bless our church and do the work of ministry from the parking lot all the way through to the benediction. You saw us do that. Well, I tried to get all the teams that work every single Sunday and forgot that the first aid care team is here every Sunday attending to all of our health issues. Will you help me celebrate these men and women who are always here? always around always participating whenever there's an illness whenever anyone takes ill in worship they are always available to attend to them until paramedics get here or until we get can get them in a comfortable space and I do not take your work for granted thank you so much for doing what you do and doing it with such diligence Deacon Dr. Donnie Evans is their leader and there are multiple members of that ministry and to God be the glory for every one of you thank you for being here every single Sunday every single service amen our chairman of Deacon stood for January birthdays. I forgot to acknowledge him, but I praise God for Deacon Brian Hicks, our, our chairman of Deacons who celebrated his birthday last week. Is what your Lisa's birthday is this month too? Both of them are celebrating. Deacon is Hicks as well, and we praise God for these leaders of our church who are celebrating during this month. Well, church is offering time in the Lord's house, and we're excited about giving. Yep. We're excited about giving. Our courtesy court members are moving about us and they have envelopes just in case you need an envelope in which to put your your gift today if you have a paper gift that you'd like to give to the lord's church or the work of the lord's kingdom we invite you to utilize the ministry of these sisters and brothers who are passing about us now but if you would prefer the digital platforms you'll see them scrolling on the screens even now and we invite you to utilize those digital platforms so that we might give unto the lord as an act of worship unto god as we give this sunday afternoon we are reminded that each of us is expected to bring the tithe into the storehouse, T-I-T-H-E. It is the first 10% of our increase. The first tenth is holy unto God, so says the Bible. And so we bring that first tenth as an act of worship unto the Lord. But beyond that is an offering that speaks to our level of commitment and our level of, of, of appreciation to God for giving to us all that we have. And so we give back unto God in abundance as we have been given from God in abundance. Now we give likewise to Missions and Mercy. If you were here on the last night of the year, there was a video that give, gave to us the year in review. And at the end of that video, we found out just how much, because of your generosity, we've been able to give into the community to bless brothers and sisters who are in need. When we give to Missions and Mercy, we give to make sure that those who do not have what they need at certain points in their lives can be made better as a consequence. And because of your generosity, we were able to give just under $1 million to brothers and sisters who were in need. To God be the glory. Amen. 
Pastor, when I saw that graphic, I leaned over to Reverend Johnson. I said, listen, we can't come that close to a million and not exceed it next year. So this year, we plan to give more than a million dollars away to make sure that people's lives are made better because Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church is in Third Ward, Houston, Texas. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Amen. So we give to Missions and Mercy. And then finally, we give to the debt elimination of this building. And we can do all of that at one time. Isn't that wonderful? That we are allowed and able and equipped and empowered to do all of that at one time. And so we give to the dead elimination of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And we're grateful for those of you who have been consistent to give to ensure that we can pay this debt off in an an expeditious amount of time. And to God be the glory, we're on track to do just that in the next three and a half to four years. To God be the glory. Well, we're going to give this Sunday afternoon. And as we give, we've got to consecrate it unto God. I don't know how God does it, but some kind of way. When we consecrate our gifts and trust God with the tithe, he expands our resources in amazing ways so that he can do through us amazing things. So let's pray on this Sunday morning as we give these gifts unto God and trust God to do the amazing with them and with us. Great God, how we love you and praise you. How we thank you for your goodness and your grace. We bless you for the opportunity now to give unto you a portion of what you have given to us, beginning with the tithe, continuing with our offerings and our gifts to these various opportunities. We give you praise that you have consistently provided for us, supplied our need, and we pray that as we recognize how you give to us, that we will likewise resemble your giving as we give to others. Bless now each gift and each giver. Let no one lack as a consequence of what she or he gives this day. But may all that we do be to your glory and to your honor. And we will rest assured tonight that we cannot beat God giving no matter how we try. We thank you on this first Sunday for victory in our finances. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give unto our God. And while we're giving... These precious people who bless us every single Sunday in music ministry are going to do just so, just so again. Will you receive the music ministry of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church as they prepare us for the word of God?
your blood, Jesus. Your blood that washed me. Your blood that cleansed me. Your blood that made me whole. Your blood that brought me out. Your blood that delivered me, Jesus. the glory for that reality on this first Sunday of January 2024. Hallelujah. I thank God that I'm saved. I thank God I'm blood washed. <laughs> all because of the blood, all because of the blood. Amen, amen, amen. The church, I want to thank God for this congregation and for the way that you honor the Lord on this first Sunday of January. You've seen the saints of God who were unable to get into the cathedral, but they are in the sanctuary, and I thank God for them. But we've got about four other overflow rooms that are filled with worshipers today. And we thank God for that. Amen. Look at those saints. Praise the Lord. Come on and thank God for saints coming to church on Sunday morning. Amen. 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 We thank God for them. Youth church is filled with worshipers. Other classrooms are filled with worshipers. And we recognize that we have to get this year started right, don't we? Amen. And we thank God that each of you has prioritized the Lord today and you've come to the Lord's church on this Sunday. I want to begin a new series of messages for this month that shall kick off our year. And I want to call this series of sermons, We Can Do This. We Can Do This. And for these weeks here in the month of January, I want to press that point just a little bit. I want to go to a familiar passage of scripture that most Bible readers have read or recited over the years of your Christian journey. Maybe you're new to the faith and you've not yet seen this verse, but I want you to incorporate it into your list of affirmations on any given day. At Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, the New Testament book of Philippians chapter 4. At verse 13, the New Testament book of Philippians at chapter 4 at verse 13. And I want all of us to read it from the King James Version. That's, that's the version from which I learned it. And I want you to read it or recite it. It'll be on the screen. Everybody be able to read it if you can't quickly locate it in your Bibles. But the King James Version of Philippians chapter 4 at verse 13 is going to be our foundational scripture for this month. Uh, and hopefully for your year and maybe even for your life. But I want us to listen as we share it together. <clears throat> Let's read or recite together Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 from the King James Version. Let us begin. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen. That's enough. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. This, this 
affirmation, this reality that the Apostle Paul cites in verse 13 of chapter 4 of Philippians is a verse that I think all of us should have in our hearts and minds and we ought to be able to hold on to it as the years continue to pass. For each of us will be called upon to do something, have some challenge in front of us, that will sometimes seek to subvert the reality that God has equipped us, even empowered us, to go farther and do more than we would ever think we're able to do. The God of our salvation is always calling us to higher, calling us to greater, calling us to do more, to attain more, to achieve more. And we should never be satisfied with who we are and where we are and what we've become. We should always be seeking to go farther and do more for God's glory and for the good of other people. And so when Paul writes this missive to the Philippian church, he reminds them that they've got something within them that's going to help them to do everything that needs to be done. And that is they've got a Christ who strengthens them. That the strength of the Lord enables them to do what needs to be done in the seasons and situations of their lives where God is calling them to go to the next level. To be sure, chapter 4 is a gathering, a collective of directives, instructions that the Apostle Paul gives to this Philippian church. A church to be sure that he loves. This church is less like pastor and people and more like father and children. Oh, Paul loves this church. They love him. They have an abiding relationship one with another. They have been in fellowship for an extended period of time. So what he writes to them in this book is not simply some pastoral missing to help them understand the things of the kingdom. He helps them to understand how to live this life they've been called upon to live. And when we get to chapter 4, he gives them instructions. And by the time he gets to verse 13, he is shutting down that list of instructions and lets them know that he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. And just as he can, so too can they. That they are not limited, but they have the opportunity to rise higher and do more and be more effective than they ever thought they should be. Well, there's a collective of directives. There's a collective of instructions that Paul gives to the children of Philippi in this missive. But I want to focus our attention today on the instructions of verses 8 and 9. I want to read in your hearing verses 8 and 9. You need not rise to hear these words. But this is the launching pad of our text for today because I believe that this is going to help us as we move through to. 2024. Listen to verses 8 and 9 of chapter 4 of the book of Philippians from the New International Version. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Yeah, that's what Paul says. He says you got to make sure that you think on certain things. So for this first installment of this New Year's series of messages, I want to talk this afternoon for a few minutes from the subject, I've got to get my mind right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If, if we're going to jump this off right nicely here, we got, we got to get our minds right. I've got to get my mind right. There are a few people on your row who know this already. There are some people in church today who've never heard this before. So let me tell you, I grew up at Emmanuel Baptist Church, 8301 South Damon Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60620, where Reverend Dr. L.K. Curry was my pastor. And back there is where I learned to develop my theology. It was there that I learned about God and God's goodness toward God's people. I learned that God was creator and provider, sustainer and healer, deliverer and supplier. I learned some things about God that formed my theology from that day until this. And would you believe that those old saints at Emmanuel had a way of talking about God that stuck in my mind from that day until this. They would say things like, he's a way maker, he's a storm tamer, they would say things like he's the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star and every now and then those saints would say something like this that God is a heart fixer 
Y'all know my church members and a heart and a mind regulator that God is a heart fixer and a mind regulator and we my brothers and sisters need to know that on this seventh day of January because if the truth be told there are some of us in here who can testify that there are some days when our minds play tricks on us there are some days where we get all conflicted and messed up in the head and we need somebody to regulate our minds can I find seven people in here who can testify sometimes just trying to go from one day to the next one week to the next, one month to the next can toy with your mind, can make your mind run in differing kinds of circles and ways. And you need somebody to regulate your mind, somebody to talk you down off the ledge, somebody to let you know, hey, you got this thing, somebody to let you know, relax, man, relax, sis. You are in complete control. And in this season where mental health is a necessity to talk about and to be about we need to know that we've got a God who is able to regulate our minds and keep us going when we feel like giving up I wish somebody who's watched him regulate your mind would encourage your pew partner and say he did it for me <laughs> he's done it for me over and over again he's helped me to know that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper he let me know that he would comfort me when I couldn't find comfort anywhere else he let me know that he would drive tears from my eyes and enable me to keep on going when I feel like giving up. I need somebody who's helped, who's seen him regulate your mind to help me preach and encourage somebody and testify he's still the God who's the lifter of bowed down heads. He's still the God who puts your broken heart back together and gives you another lease on life. Somebody ought to thank God that God does not leave you in the doldrums of depression, in the alleys of anxiety for an extended period period of time he will come rescue you he'll deliver you he will lift you up and your head will be lifted up above your enemies round about you somebody testify he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator yes lord. yes lord yes lord he'll keep your mind i tell you he'll keep your mind and you need to know that walking into 2024 I don't know what this year is going to yield for you and for me but I do know that he'll keep your mind if you let him I said he'll keep your mind if you let him well church family the apostle Paul like a great father speaks to his beloved children like a beloved pastor he speaks to his beloved parishioners and lets them know that the God they serve is a God who is on their side they can trust that God because God is up to something in their lives read it when you get a chance in addition to reading Romans chapters 1 and 2 on this day which is our scheduled reading you can like rise read the whole book of Philippians four short chapters before this day is over and when you do you'll get happy happy if you get happy all by yourself because in chapter one the apostle Paul tells these beloved brothers and sisters listen here he that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ in chapter two he says don't stress don't trip let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus I'll come back to that later on in chapter three he lets them know hey hey y'all you need to know something about this man named Jesus as a matter of fact I want to know him in the power of his his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering and if that wasn't good enough in chapter 3 he says I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind reaching forth to those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus oh Paul is giving them some good information as he moves through his missive and by the time he gets to chapter 4 he gives them so much instruction so many directives that he lets them know don't get all messed up in the head about that because if you understand who God is you know you can handle all the instructions I'm giving you as a matter of fact this is what you need to know I can do you already know all things through Christ who gives me strength I love this church the New International Version says I can do all of this through Christ
Christ who gives me strength. We can do it all. You can handle every circumstance and situation that comes in your life. And I don't know what your God-given vision is for 2024, but you need to be seeking God for a God-given vision that is beyond yourself, that is bigger than you, that will not just work for your own aggrandizement, but will work for the assistance of somebody else. You need to hear me when I tell you a God-ordained vision will never be just about you. A God-ordained vision is always about somebody else. How can I help somebody? How can I lift somebody? How can I empower somebody? How can I encourage somebody? Can I find 12 people in here who can testify if it hadn't been for them somebodies in your life? You wouldn't be where you are right now, but somebody thought beyond themselves and they blessed your life. You got to get a God-sized vision. I want you to do that for this year. I don't want you to talk yourself out of what you know you can do. I don't want you to be pessimistic throughout this year. I want you to believe God for great things, and then I want you to attempt great things for God. Here is what the Apostle Paul says. You can do it. We can do it. It is possible. And my brothers and sisters, I want us to walk even farther into 2024, believing that no weapon formed against us is going to be able to prosper and this God we have will give us success Whew, I like this church family all of us have to have a God ordained vision a God sized vision that allows us to be fueled into the next season of our lives what is it that you left undone in 2023 that you need to get done in 2024 what is it that you heard the Lord tell you to do several years ago and you still haven't started it to this day what is it that you know you should have been doing to get your life together I know you had your vision board I know you had your whiteboard I know you wrote down your things to do list and all them things are still on there to be done and today the Lord is saying it's time now to stop shucking and jiving it's time to stop putting off until tomorrow what you can start doing today the Lord says get yourself up dust yourself off lift up your head because we can do this If you knew you were supposed to write the book, you should have written the book by now, at least charted out the chapters. If you knew you were supposed to go back to school, you should have gone back to school by now. At least you should have looked into how you could get in, in, enrolled in class. If you knew good and well you were supposed to finish the degree, why are you still wasting time? The year is now upon us, and this is the time to do something. Last year, we expected great things from God. This year, we're attempting great great things for God. I need seven people in here who said I saw the amazing last year. I plan to do the amazing this year. I refuse to be limited. I refuse to be held captive. I refuse to be bound. If I got to read the book, I'm going to read the book. I don't know if you saw the Cat Williams interview, but Cat Williams said he read 3,000 books in a year. I appreciate you, Mr. Williams, but uh, that's a whole lot of reading in one year when you 8 to 12 years old. I appreciate you. may need to put some stuff down so you can understand that you have to... Okay, my fault, my bad. Uh, he said... We got, we, got, we got to do some things for the Lord. We got to do some things for the Lord. I, I submit that every one of us has the, pro, the, the ability... To make a change in this world if we choose to all of us have the ability to make some modifications in our communities if we choose to I, I was at the inauguration thank you sister Carolyn Shabazz for giving us the invitation thank you but Chris Hollins for giving us the invitation we went to the inauguration this past Tuesday and while we were there, I was heartened to see the five council members who are of African-American descent. I was grateful for that, but I sat there in my seat saying, we can do better. There's still more individuals who can be taken 
taking these seats in these positions of authority and activating change in our communities all we got to do is raise them up in the church we need some most sane saved citizens who can make a difference in our economy in our nation in our society I need somebody to help me here I went I went it was several years ago but when Senator Boris Miles was inaugurated as state senator he invited us up we went to the inauguration and it was there that I got disheartened all over again for it was only two African American state senators and still to this day there are only two and I just got a funny feeling there are enough woke folk in this church who can understand the under the necessity of making sure that we are represented at all the seats of authority and positions of power so that some change can be made in these communities I got so excited when Siobhan Carr sent me a message and she said, Pastor, I'm running for judge because we need some most people sitting in black robes who have a heart for God's people, who have been born and raised in the church. They've been to Sunday school, read the scriptures, got Bible-believing families so that we don't keep putting children in the preschool to prison pipeline, but we make sure that we cultivate a congregation, a nation of brothers and sisters who take care of the least, the last, the left out, and the look over can I find somebody who will holler, we can do it? We need them on the local level, state level, federal level, Madam Congresswoman. We need more individuals to go to these places who are saved, sane, and woke, and care about people that other folk don't care about. And we can do this. Who told you you can't do it? And why are you listening to him? I'll ask you again. Who told you you can't do it? Why are you listening to him? If God be for you. I feel like preaching. Y'all better come on and help me. Who can be against? Is there anybody in here who says greater is he who is in me? than he that's in the world. All right. How do you do it? How do you do it, Pastor Lawson? How do you do it, Reverend? How, how do you do it? May I submit, church family, that, that the Apostle Paul gives us some instructions hey, in chapter 4 that will help us to do just that. May I submit in the first place that if we're going to do it, it's going to require a redirection of our thinking. Hear me, it's going to require a redirection of our thinking. I know you won't believe this, but by human nature, oftentimes we are, we are led to think negatively rather than positively. Our human nature, we're born in sin, shaving iniquity. Our human nature gives us a bent toward the negative instead of the positive. And there are, they, there are days, there are, there are seasons, there are moments when you and I have to make ourselves be positive rather than negative. We, we will look at a situation and find everything wrong with it instead of talking about the things that are right with it. Come on, talk to me. We, we can look at our own situation and talk about how much we don't have and refuse to celebrate what we do have. Are you listening to me, church? And we have to guard ourselves, guard ourselves against always being pessimistic and not optimistic, being people of fear and not people of faith. And I need some warriors in here today who can testify. There have been enough days in my life where I have talked myself out of my next possibility. I have talked myself out of my next opportunity. It's time now to pick myself up and dust myself off and begin to speak to myself positively and believe that greater things are still ahead. But, but you can't say it unless you think it. Listen, you talk like you talk because you think like you think. You live like you live because you think like you think. You behave how you behave because you think how you think. But when your thinking gets redirected, when it gets reoriented, when it gets refashioned, reshaped, you'll find yourself telling yourself, I can do. 
Yeah, it, it is a necessity, my friends, to redirect our thinking. There's a woman in the Bible, they called her the woman with the issue of blood. We never got her name, but her story is given in a couple of Gospels. And when we find out her story, we find out she's been hemorrhaging for 12 years. She finds out that Jesus is passing by, and she believes that Jesus is a miracle worker, and Jesus can heal her hemorrhaging body. But there's one passage, one, one of the Gospel writers, I believe is Matthew. Matthew says, listen, she said to herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Did you catch it? Let me give it to you again. The Bible says she's been hemorrhaging for 12 years. Most folk would think she'd be pessimistic and not believe that anything can happen about her situation. She'll never get better. Everything about her circumstance will always be negative. But your Bible says she said to herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She started talking how she was talking because she was thinking the way she was thinking. And she started talking to herself. Now, I know there's somebody on your road who will tell you you crazy when you talk to yourself. Hear me. You ain't crazy when you talk to yourself. You crazy when you say the wrong thing back to yourself. You need to talk to yourself every now and then. You need to tell yourself, get yourself together. Tell yourself, pull yourself up. Tell yourself, well, get out this bed. Bed. Get your clothes on. Go to work. Do your job. Go to school. Read the book. Do the assignment. Is there anybody in here? You need to talk to yourself. And the Bible says that when she talked to herself, she pressed her way through the crowd, touched the hem of his garment, and she was made whole. Some of you going to be made whole by yourself and pressing through some stuff but is there anybody who believes that if I say the right thing to myself I'll be able to do the right thing for myself and I'll see God giving victory to myself so Paul tells his beloved believers listen here Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about that. Fill your minds with that which is going to help you make progress. Fill your mind with that which is going to take you higher and not keep you stagnant in the space where you are. I mean no harm this afternoon, but you can't fill your mind with the real housewives of third war, fourth war, fifth war, and acres home and expect that you gonna think right all the time. You need to find Claire Huxtable somewhere. Just put her in there. Just put her in there. I don't mean no harm. You can't listen to gangster rap every day, all day and think you're going to be the positive person you need to be. Can you give me 10 minutes of gospel, three minutes of praise and worship? I'll settle for smooth jazz. Just do something. Calm yourself down. You live like you live because you think like you think. You act like you act because you think like you think. You talk like you talk because you think like you think. But when I change my thinking, my whole life gets turned around. I had a story about Pastor Lawson. My time is out. I'll tell you later. He's always been a real positive brother. I'll tell you that story later, but I want to move on now because I want you to make sure that you have a redirection of your thinking. But secondly, church, I want to make sure that you have a recollection of your teaching. Um, not just a redirection of your thinking. We also have to have a redirect recollection of our teaching. Um, recollection of our teaching. Uh, Paul says, listen, um, what you have learned and received and heard from me, verse 9, or seen in me, this is what I want you to do, 
Put it into practice. Um, uh, Paul literally suggests to these brothers and sisters that your teachers matter. You got to be careful who you're listening to. Got to be careful who you allow to take up residence in your cognition. Be careful who's feeding you information. Because if you're always listening to people who are feeding you down a deleterious path, you will never get to the place where God has for you. Paul says, you've been watching me. As a matter of fact, Paul organized this church more than a decade before he wrote this missive. So they've been watching him for at least 10 years. They've been listening to him for about 10 years. They have been, they've been experiencing his teaching for 10 years. He says, now you've seen me. Trust God when nobody else would trust God. You've heard me talk about God and what God is able to do. You've even heard, heard the gospel as a consequence of my giving it to you. And I need you now, not just simply to hear what you heard. I need you to put it into practice. Um, there, there are some saints, uh, there are some saints who take notes every Sunday. You take notes on the sermon every Sunday. And there are some folk who take notes on the sermon every Sunday and never look at the notes after Sunday. <laughs> Don't look to that person who's been writing the whole service. Look straight ahead. Don't do that. That's so rude. That's so rude. That's so rude. Somebody just said, you know, we talking about you. No, no. Keep your focus. Keep your focus. I enjoy my job. I hope you enjoy yours. Watch this. He, he says, listen, you've seen some stuff. You've heard some stuff. You've experienced some things. I've been teaching you for a decade now. And by now, you ought to move from just enjoying to embodying. Too much. You need to, you need to move from just believing to behaving. Um, you need to move from just hearing it to living it. Yeah. Um, and this is the year, church, where we get more significantly committed to not just hearing the word, but doing what the word says do. <laughs> there were so many more amens a few minutes ago. I don't know where they all went. I'm still looking at the same people, but fewer of them are clapping and saying amen. The Bible says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. I need to find six people in here who say, I don't know how I'm going to do all of it, but I'm just going to try to be a bit better in 24 than I was in 23. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I just believe that the God I serve is going to give me the strength to keep on moving forward, to keep on progressing. Since I done crossed over, make sense to take the cross over, and I'm going to be better in this next year. I like this. He says what you've seen. What you've heard, what you've received, what you've learned, put it into practice. Don't just sit on it, put it into practice. Don't just hear it, put it into practice. And when you do that, you're going to see yourself growing. Now, you must understand, the virtues he has given to them in verse 8 are, 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 are the virtues of Christ-likeness. All of those things depict Jesus Christ. And he's literally saying to them, listen, if you take on these virtues, you're going to start acting more like Jesus Christ. Which is the responsibility of every Christian anyway. Word Christian means follower of Jesus. And when you can't bring on these things, you start thinking this way, you begin to act like Jesus. Okay, there's somebody who said, I hear Paul telling me what I'm supposed to do, but I remember Paul, and Paul has a past, and I can't seem to get past his past. And isn't it true sometimes that we can't get past the past of other people, and we have to be always focused on what they used to be. We can never get past what happened back in the day. We can never get past who they used to be. But Paul 
Paul says, hey, hey, if you can't think about me and follow me, let me take you back to chapter 2. Because in chapter 2, he says we got an example that is far greater than the example of the apostle Paul. He says there's a man named Jesus <laughs> who never committed any sin, never did any wrong. And if you follow his example, you'll be farther along than you ever would be. As a matter of fact, I told you I was coming back to it. Chapter 2, verse 5 goes like this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who found himself, thought it's not robbery, to give himself and humble himself to death, even death on a cross. And here's what your Bible says, that after he did what the Lord told him to do, God highly exalted him and gave him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. I need to find some people in here who can testify. Since you got hooked up with Jesus, your life has been exponentially better. Since you got connected with Jesus, your life has been so much better that every day with Jesus gets sweeter than the day before. Can I find somebody who's ever seen the Lord regulate your mind and let you know that he was with you in the midst of your circumstance so you had no reason to fear, no reason to act as if he's not there? I need 12 people in that balcony of the sanctuary to testify I'm so glad I got Jesus in my life because he allows me to see a picture of what I can become put it into practice yes you can read the Bible in one year stop telling yourself, yourself you can't yes you can fast for the month of January stop telling yourself you can't how do I know? Because Jesus committed himself to knowing the scriptures and Jesus committed himself to fasting and you can keep praying and believe in God for great things because Jesus did it. And if we're going to follow Jesus, we can't just do it for the mountaintop stuff. We can't just do it for fishes and loaves when we're hungry. We can't just do it for a healing and then run our own way. I need somebody to testify. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Yes, so I'm going to have to change some stuff. I'm going to have to put some stuff into practice. I can't just read from Twitter and IG every day. I got to have a little Psalm 23, a little Matthew 6, 33. Because Matthew 6, 33 says, seek uh, the Lord. And when you seek the Lord, when you put him first, all these things will be added unto you. Is there anybody in here who can testify? When I have sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he has begun to open up vistas of opportunities and possibilities to me. I need somebody. I'm going to move on to point three. I need somebody on every road to look back over your life and begin to testify. When I started putting Jesus first, he opened doors for me that no one could close. He closed some doors that nobody could open. When I put Jesus first, he began to blow my mind in ways that make me look back and say, Wow, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, I'm trying to quit, but there's some testimonies in here of the goodness of the Lord. I'm trying to quit, but there's some people in here who know that you've had an exemplar in Jesus whom you can follow. And that's why I want to close, because there's somebody who's still on the fence. Somebody who's still saying, but pastor, you don't know my history. Pastor, you don't know how bad it's been for me. And you're right, I don't know your whole story. But I don't have to know your whole story when I know the biblical story. Because the biblical story says no matter what your story is, when you put his story in the midst of your story, he works all things together for your good. Now, now that was a good spot for the whole church to get happy. But let me see if I can make it plain. I submit today that we have to have a redirection of our thinking. We have to have a recollection of our teaching. But I close when I tell you that we have to have a remediation of our tripping. Because I've gone through this whole sermon, 30 minutes, and somebody's still tripping. Man, you don't know my story. Man, you don't know where I came from. You don't know how broke I am. You don't know how behind the eight ball I feel. You don't know how the curve has been outside of my direction. You tripping? 
And I came to tell you that the God we serve loves us so much. He gives us a remedy, remediation for our tripping. Have you ever been tripping after the benediction? Three people who lay raised their head. Three people. Have you ever been tripping and you just heard the good news of Jesus Christ? Have you tripped on Monday when you heard what God could do on Sunday? Oh, if we'll be honest, I'll testify. I've been tripping. I didn't trust God the way I needed to. And so Paul says, I know some of us are going to trip like that. But by the time he gets to the end of verse 9, he says, you don't have any reason to trip because here's the good news. When you put all these things into practice, here's the good news. The God of peace will be with you. Yep. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right, it's getting around. I hope you're clapping in the overflow rooms because I just gave you some good news on a Sunday afternoon. If you didn't at least smile, I need to give it to you again. Can I give it to you again? He says, no matter what comes in your life, and I say it like this, no matter what shows up in 2024, here's the good news on a Sunday afternoon. The God of peace will be with you. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. That was 75% of this room. I don't know about the other rooms, but let me try until everybody gets it. I said, the Bible says that when you redirect your thinking and recollect your teaching, the good news is the God of peace will be with you. Now, that may not make any sense, may not make any difference for folk who think you can handle life by yourself. But I need to talk to the people who know you act differently, you respond differently when your people are with you. When you got the people who are closest to you with you, you do things differently. I mean, I remember being in the mall back in Chicago and we were going through the mall acting crazy, talking about people. And I was talking about people. I'm the smallest one in the group. And I'm just talking about people. And the guys in front of us heard me talking about them. They looked around and those south side of Chicago brothers were on their way to come get me. But my boys were with me. And because my boys were with me, they were like, I wish you would. And I'm standing here today because they didn't get at me. I need somebody in here who knows that when your folk are with you, you respond differently. When your ride or die girls are backing you up, you respond differently. Well, if you respond differently when your boys are with you, if you respond differently when your girls are with you, if you respond differently when your sisters and brothers are beside you, how much better should you respond? When you find out that the God of peace is with you. I need 10 or 12 people in here who know that you need your mind regulated to go ahead and celebrate the fact that the regulator has moved up and down the aisles of this congregation to let you know I'll be with you in trouble. I'll be with you in trial. I'll be with you on the mountain. I'll be with you in the valley. I refuse to leave you. And no matter how much confusion and chaos you find, I'll speak peace to your situation is there anybody who needs the Lord to give you peace that passes all understanding is there anybody in here who has heard the Bible and the Bible says God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him I need somebody who said I'm going through 24 with my mind stayed on Jesus I'm going through 24 thinking good thoughts believing God for great things, attempting great things for God. As a matter of fact, if I could go back to Emmanuel Baptist Church, I could hear those old saints singing, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm going all the way with my mind stayed on Jesus. So somebody in the building looking forward to a good 24 I need you to open up your mouth lift up your hands and thank your God that the God of peace will be with you I'm trying to close Pastor Lawson but I hear the saints singing in my ears he walks with me he talks with me he tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there known. Won't he do it? You better talk to me in here. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way for you? Won't he open doors for you? Won't he provide for you? Shout he
receive it, I gotta get my mind right. 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 You know that all of us in some spaces and areas of life need to redirect our thinking. Every one of us. This was not a message for just two or three people that you thought it was supposed to be for. This is not for you to be saying, ooh, I wish Cousin Nook Nook was here. Because Cousin Nook Nook needed to hear that. I'm going to make sure I pull that up on YouTube. No! This was for you, sis. This was for you, bruh. This for your family. For all of us. Preacher included. This for every one of us. Got to get our minds right. Then we'll see God in a brand new light. Doing with us and in us and through us and for us what we could never do for ourselves. Oh, child of God, hear me. I mentioned it in the message. This is not just the year of amazing things from God. This is the year of doing amazing things for God. And we can do this in Jesus name somebody shout amen clap your hands like it's the last time you get a chance praise God however you led celebrate the fact that you're about to have your mind blown by what God does in your life glory to God forevermore glory to God forevermore if you're able to stand I want you to stand all over the church we're going to extend an invitation and we're going to go to the table of the Lord and we're going to leave together Please, no matter whether you are in the sanctuary, the cathedral, or the overflow spaces, do not leave until we have concluded at the Lord's table. Do not leave until we've, this is the most important part of the worship service, and we remember, recollect what the Lord has done for us through Jesus Christ. I want to extend an invitation. I got a funny feeling and a sneaking suspicion that there are sisters and brothers all over the church house today who need to make a decision for Jesus Christ. I got good news for you. At our first service, 85 people made a decision for the Lord Jesus. Yeah. 85 people. Hallelujah. My brother right here on the third row was the first person to walk down the aisle at the first service. He, he, he was in worship with me. I was preaching in Baltimore this past Thursday, and he was in worship with me. He came up after service. He said, Pastor, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to Houston. I'm wheel away ever. I'm coming to Houston, and I'm joining officially Sunday morning. He was the first one to join. Made a decision for the Lord and for his church. God bless you, man. I got a funny feeling that there's some people all over the church who made up a similar decision in their minds before you came to church since you've been in church you've heard the Lord speaking to you saying that if you're gonna redirect your thinking one of the things you need to do is commit your way unto the Lord and today I want you to do that I want you to do that I want you to do that there's some people all over the church in the sanctuary in the cathedral in the overflow space the youth church who say pastor I need a relationship with Jesus Christ my mind has been playing tricks on me for real for real I've been conflicted in my thoughts. My thinking has been a little off. I need to get this thing straight right now. I want you to come toward me right now if you know you need to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Hey sis, come on here, God bless you. I see you coming, my brothers. I see you walking from the balcony. Listen, say, Pastor, I'm saved. I have a relationship with Jesus, but I don't have a church home. And I believe that the Lord has led me to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And I don't want to go another Sunday without having a church home called Wheeler Avenue. Come on, Carson. Bring Parkston on down here. So excited about his decision for Jesus Christ. God bless you. Doesn't matter where you are. There are leaders in every space that will make themselves available to you. Just start walking toward those folk in black and white. And they'll make themselves available to you for such a time as this. Come on, sisters. Come on, brothers. The invitation is extended. Man, woman, or child. Here they come walking. Come on, you ought to be celebrating. In the sanctuary, start walking toward Dr. Williams. In the youth church, start walking toward Reverend Boone. In those other spaces, start walking toward those deacons and deaconesses that are there. Right now, today, today. Right now, today. Just come. Come on, get excited about it. I need some life and fervor in the sanctuary. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. Come on, sing. When they walk past you, start clapping your hands. Celebrate them as they walk past you, believe it. Come on. Come on, come on. You ought to know him. You 
today, whether here in the cathedral, whether in the sanctuary, in the overflow spaces, whomever you are, wherever you are, I want you to know that you're welcome here. So I need to do some pew evangelism. These used to be evangelism on your road, wherever you're seated. Look towards somebody, whether you know them or not. Look towards somebody, put a big old smile on your face and ask them with the joy of the Lord, is the pastor waiting on you? Is the pastor waiting on you? Don't miss a person. Don't miss an opportunity. Look towards somebody. Ask them, is the pastor waiting on you? If they say no, say praise the Lord. If they say yes, say, I'll walk with you. I can't walk for you, but I will walk with you. I'll walk with you. If they don't say anything, look back toward them. Say, you heard that man talking. Don't act like you didn't hear him. See, look at him moving. Look at him moving. Look at him moving. It just takes somebody to encourage them. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. It just takes somebody encouraging you. Yeah. And as they're walking, look at these brothers and sisters who are moving all around the church now. Praise the Lord. These sisters coming down this center aisle. Come on. If you're upstairs, that's not too far to walk. Come on downstairs in the cathedral. If you're upstairs in the sanctuary, come on downstairs. There are brothers and sisters who will guide you into the sanctuary at the front where Dr. Williams is standing waiting on you. If you're in youth church, just walk on down that aisle. Reverend Boone is there waiting on you. If you're in the classrooms, those deacons are right there waiting on you. Walking. Look at that. Look at that. Man, we're so excited about your future. We're so excited about what God is about to do in your life. Hallelujah. Come on, they're coming from the balcony. They're coming from the balcony. Everybody say, come on. Encourage them. Say, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Right now. Say, God bless you, sis. We've been waiting on you.
done on this Sunday morning, this Sunday afternoon now. Thank God for all of you, church family. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If there are those who still need to make your way, come on. We're waiting on you in every space, and we'll make room for you because this is our responsibility. Listen, on behalf of the entirety of our church family, I say to each one of you who stands before us this Sunday afternoon, welcome to your new church home. We're so glad that you are here and that we're able to be your new sisters and brothers in this family of faith and fellowship known as Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. To those who stand with us here in the cathedral, God bless you. Thank God for your decision. To those who are in the sanctuary, God bless you. Thank God for your decision. For those who are in the other classrooms, spaces the youth church God bless you thank God for your decision and let me show you as a church family just how excited we are about your new steps in the kingdom of God come on church God bless you, God bless you. and we thank God for you listen I'm going to ask that Dr. Williams in the sanctuary will guide those who are there in that space to the places where they need to be. Reverend Boone, if, those, if, those, if some have come with you there in the, in, the, in the youth church, make sure you guide them as necessary. And such is the case with all the other spaces in this cathedral. I want you to all turn that way. Look that way. You'll see the Reverend Dawn Floyd with her hand lifted. And will you please follow her into the Lumen Induction Room, Lumen Orientation Room. And while you're walking, we'll be safe. Celebrating! Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Church, don't let them leave without knowing how excited we are. Yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. come now to remember to recollect that was what we said to reflect upon the great work that was done through Jesus Christ on a skull shaped hill outside of the holy city on that hill that we call Calvary Jesus died to take our place to atone for our sins and this afternoon we come to do what he asked us to do no what he commanded us to do he said do this in remembrance of me this afternoon we come to this table to remember the body that was broken on that on that hill beaten battered bruised the blood that was shed on that hill flowing from his brow all the way to the soles of his feet that were punctured with spikes. And as we remember the blood that Jesus shed, we are reminded that that blood has both covered and cleansed all of our sins. So today we come to this table remembering the finished work that was done at Calvary. But likewise remembering that the night before Jesus died, he took bread and wine, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, said, take, eat, drink, when you do this, you do so in remembrance of me. And as often as you do this, you will show forth my death until I come. Today we remember the death of Jesus Christ, which is what saved us from all of our sins. Our chairman of Deacons, Deacon Hicks, is going to pray a prayer of consecration over these elements this afternoon. And we're going to receive them in every space all across the campus. And as we do so, we're going to sing and remember what Jesus Christ has done for us by securing our salvation. To get the chairman, will you lead us in prayer? Church family, let us pray. God, our heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ, we thank you, Lord God, for this day, this day that you have made. We are rejoicing in it, thanking you for your loving kindness and for your grace. We come, Lord God, with our minds stayed on you this day, Lord. On this first Sunday in this new year, God, we come to practice in obedience 
your words that says, do this in remembrance of me. So God, we come this day asking that you would bless these elements here on this table, God. Bless them, consecrate them for our use as we remember your death. As we remember, Lord God, on that faithful night that you took bread from the mill and blessed it and broke it and said, take, eat, for this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, God, you took the cup said, take this wine that represents the shed blood for the remission of sin. God, we thank you. We thank you that you bless us. We thank you that you keep us. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that indwells us. Lord God, we pray that you would use us for your glory as we go from this place this day into this year, Lord God. Help us to practice all that we have learned and all that we know and recall it all to our minds that we might follow you and follow Christ and his example. Thank you for his sacrifice. Thank you for his death on the cross that we might live. God, we give you glory, honor, and praise this day and always, thanking you for the expectation of great things, the amazing things that we can do because you live in us. In his name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Many of you received your elements as you came into the Lord's church today. But if those, those of you who have not yet received the elements of the Lord's Supper, won't you just slip up your hands? Our dutiful Lord's Church servants will respond to you immediately. Just slip up your hand and leave them raised until you have been served by our deacons, our clergy. You will be served in just a moment as we sing together the blood that Jesus shed for me. Sing, beloved. That Jesus shed.
instruments in our hands to remind us of the supreme sacrifice that our Savior made for us at Calvary. We hold these elements to remind us that the Lord loved us so much that he gave his very life to redeem us from our sins. When we hold this bread in our hands, it's not just a morsel of bread, it's a symbol of the commitment of Jesus Christ to have his body wounded, broken for you and for me so we might have life everlasting. And so when we remember how the Lord was wounded, crushed for each one of us, for our iniquities, for our transgressions, for our, for our sin. Let's take this bread today for the first time in 2024 and let's thank God together that our salvation has been secure because Jesus gave his life for you and for me. Let's eat the bread together. Likewise, we hold the cup in our hands. Jesus passed that cup around to those disciples. He said, drink all of it because this is the new covenant in my blood. I want you to know just how much I love you. I'll go so far as to give my life for you and have my blood shed for you so that you might be redeemed back under God. So on this Sunday afternoon, for the first time for many of us in the cathedral, in the sanctuary, in the overflow spaces we take of this cup, we remember that our sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood that will never lose its power. Let's drink together on this Sunday afternoon. Gracious God, help me give you thanks for caring enough about us to refuse to give up on us. Thank you that no matter how far we strayed, your love came and got us. No matter how many times we failed, your blood covered us. And on this Sunday afternoon, as we make our way farther into 2024, we want to thank you for securing our salvation. That was an amazing thing. Now this year we want to thank you that you give us a chance to get our minds right so we can do some amazing things for you in 2024. May the world be better because you placed us in it. May our communities, our homes, our circumstances be made better because you've given us a chance to effectuate change therein. Have your way in us, with us, through us. Be glorified in our lives. May we be the light in the dark world that needs to be shown so that people might know that there's a reality in serving a true and living God. May we be salt in an unsavory environment so somebody might be drawn to Jesus Christ and will lift him for the rest of their days. Now, God, will you cover your people as we go through 24? We don't know what lay ahead of us, but we thank you that you walk with us. We thank you that the God of peace will be with us. And so we will not fear what is before us because we know that you walk with us. And we thank you for the victory that is ours because we are yours. And it's in the strong and precious name of Jesus Christ that we pray this prayer with great expectation. And all of God's people who love the Lord shout hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Now, will you celebrate God one last time before we leave? Because he's giving us the privilege of doing amazing things for him. Listen, those in the overflow spaces will be dismissed as you are led, but there are persons here in this cathedral. I'm going to ask that you will be led by the ushers as they dismiss us in the sanctuary. Do the same. But while we're leaving, we're going to be singing because that's what the disciples did as they left from that experience. They sang as they went out to the places where they go. And we sing the blood, the blood that gives me strength. Our